Hello and welcome back to this Library of Runa series. In this video, we'll be talking about the Row 1 general receptions for Star of the City. This includes Dong Huan the Grade 1 Fixer, the Night Owls, and the Ajat. These receptions gives us some solid combat and key pages, especially if you're doing this at the start of the chapter instead of the end, so let's get started. Dong Huan the Grade 1 Fixer requires one Row 1 Star of the City book and gives us Grade 1 Fixer Dong Huan. This page has 87 health, 45 stagger, is pierced damage and slash stagger injured, and has 5 passives. Speed 3, Fervor, Carver of Scars, which makes offensive dice on the first combat page of the library and uses inflict 2 bleed on hit. Toughness, which gives 1 protection and stagger protection at the start of each scene at emotion level 1 and 2, 2 at emotion level 3 and 4, and 3 at emotion level 5. Finally, Rupture Wounds makes the librarian deal 3 extra damage against enemies with bleed. The passives are overall quite strong in a bleed build, but Don Quan's base stats are a bit low so it might be hard finding room for him in team compositions past row 2 of Star of the City. This reception also gives you 4 combat pages. Mangle is a 1 cost with 2 slash dice that both inflict 1 bleed on hit, then a block die. The roll average is good enough that I think this transcends 1 cost value page syndrome, especially since it has dice type consistency, but that means I'd only be using it in a bleed focused slash build rather than never use it. Shoving Stev is a 2 cost with a single pierce die that inflicts 3 bleed on hit. Additionally, it draws a page on use. This one is worse in my opinion. 1 die means you are likely to take damage if you clash with it, and it often does less damage while free hitting. A critical moment is similar, as it has a weak evade die than a strong slash die that inflicts 3 bleed on hit, and it also draws a page on use. 2 dice is better, but a 3 cost with a 3 to 6 evade is not really where I want to be. Finally, Disgorge Innards is a powerful bleed build around. It has a weak pierce and a strong blunt, but the damage dealt increases by the amount of bleed on target. Considering that when fully optimized, you can sometimes stack triple digit numbers of bleed on a target, this page can put in some serious work, but if you're only running one or two bleed members, I would say that you can skip this one. The Night Owls require two row one star of the city books and gives us Allen. This page has 95 HP, 49 stagger, is pierce injured, and has four passives. Speed 3, Mercy, which makes offensive dice gain 1 power against targets with less than 10% HP, Stiletto, which gives pierce dice 2 power at the cost of blunt and slash dice losing 2 power, and Chinkin 1's armor, which makes it so that when the librarian uses a melee combat page, if their speed is 3 or more higher than the target, it destroys a block die of the target. In general, Mercy and Chinkin 1's armor are both pretty niche, so it's all about that stiletto. This, combined with Wedge, gives you plus 3 pierce power, which is quite nice, but it also means that the best light regen pages, Will of the City and Multi Slash, get weaker. This reception gives us 6 combat pages. Gap Attack is a 0 cost that doesn't draw pages or restore light, so it's not good. At the very least, it inflicts binds and gives haste, which is nice, but the rolls aren't good enough to justify using it. Dagger Press is similar to Mangle in that it has good enough rolls for a 1 cost that in a pierce focused deck it might transcend 1 cost value page syndrome, especially when you factor in the 2 hits it gives as well as the 1 bind it inflicts. Faint isn't as good. It's true that it has the same roll average, but the lack of dice type consistency or powerful buff makes it significantly worse for standard play. Of course, being at 1 cost with 3 offensive dice makes this a good option for strength stacking. Seize a Chance is a side grade to Iron Wall. Less power in the defensive dice in exchange for more power in the offensive die, a bind effect, and always giving 2 endurance. I personally don't use either, but it seems like a reasonable replacement. Proud the weakness is similar to a critical moment in that it has a weak defensive than a strong offensive. I'm not a fan of this one, as although the dice are better in the type and roll average, not drawing a page means the utility is much much worse. Finally, we have Stiletto, which is unique to Allen's page. It's a 4 cost with a fairly strong evade and an extremely strong pierce that inflicts bind. Additionally, the offensive dice inflict 2 bind and deal bonus damage equal to the user's haste into target's bind. I want to like this page, but I don't really like the haste bind subplay style, and the damage of this 4 cost is often lower than many 3 costs, and it doesn't bring much utility to the table, so I'm not too fond of it. The odd chat don't give you any notable key pages, but their passives can be strong attributions. Mirage restores half of the stagger damage taken during a scene at the end of each scene, with a minimum of 1, and of course, doesn't activate while staggered. This essentially halves the stagger damage you take, except for the scene that you get staggered, which is very strong overall. Hawk's Eye gives 2 protection to the ally that suffered the most damage at the end of the scene. This works great in multiples, as it can give up to 6 protection to an ally if you're using all of the Ajat pages, making them a pretty strong tank. Finally, Haboob makes it so that if the librarian gets hit by a one-sided attack, they get one protection and stagger protection next scene. 
This reception gives us six new pages, although one of them is unique to the weak Jack Key page. Harp is a pretty unplayable page, two weak blunt dice and no real utility. Sand Split and Sand Strike are in a similar position. The roll ranges are similar to All at War, but that page is usually outclassed, and these pages are slightly worse, so these are rarely worth using. Furusia is a defensive focused page with a roll range equivalent to Creek, so it's also pretty bad. The two endurance it gives would normally make up for that, but since it's on hit instead of on use, it's not guaranteed, so you'd rather use Iron Wall or Seize your chance. Jamadar is an interesting page. It has three mediocre dice, the block having a fairly wide roll range, but if it max rolls, a 4-5 pierce gets added to the end of the page, making it pretty strong. Of course, this is only a 12.5% chance, so it's quite unlikely, and the fail case is a pretty bad page, so again, not really worth using. Finally, the Udjet has a weak block and blunt, then a strong blunt that gives 2 protection to all allies next scene. This page is overall pretty strong, as the 2 protection is powerful, but since you need to use a bad key page, you probably won't ever use it. For deck building, the main features are a Don Juan slash bleed build, utilizing Mangal and Discord innards. This build is best on Hod's floor, where you have access to Obsession, but it can work on other floors by replacing Discord innards with something else. The other feature is an Alan Pierce deck. This is pretty bog standard, so not much to say about it. Note that these decks can be put into any Librarian, and the Pierce build is probably even stronger on PT Pierce stance. In the next video, we'll be covering the next and last three general receptions. I'll see you soon, and as always, thank you for watching.